When I began studying Cisco routing and switching, uh, one of the first things that I really liked about it was that when the router or the switch had a message for us, it told us in fairly clear terms. You know, you might have some percentage signs, numbers thrown in there you might have to look up once in a while, but, you know, no huge string of hexadecimal characters that didn't really mean anything, and then you had to go out to the website and look it up, etc. Uh, you know, the conversation was clear. You just have to know where that conversation is happening, and in many cases, it's the system logging messages or the syslogs themselves. Now, I've got a message that we've seen quite often in this course, you know, sometimes troubleshooting and doing it on purpose, sometimes not, but the line protocol and interface 00, zero change state to down. Well, everything here is self-explanatory, but that's kind of an odd timestamp in the front. You know, 2D03H. Well, you could figure that means days and hours, but, you know, two days, three hours, what? What exactly does that mean? Well, more, than, more about that in the very next section uh, after we're done with syslog. But the number that we've seen here in the middle of our messages, uh, that is the severity level of the message. Now we can use the severity number or the level name to filter the messaging that we see at the console or that we have sent to another device, whether that be a syslog server or something else. Now I've got a full list of the numbers here. It couldn't hurt for you to memorize these. Uh, I don't think they would ask a question like that, but they might. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, seven is debugging, uh, debugging messages. You know, can't argue with that. I'm taking this from iOS help. That's where the messages and the quotes come from. We've got six uh, informational messages, ditto. I don't think we've seen very many sixes. I know in the GLBP lab, I think when we had some state changes, we saw sixes in there. Then notification, this is probably the most common of all the levels. Uh, normal but significant conditions, basically saying this isn't an emergency, but you should know about it. Line protocol is going up, it, routing protocol adjacency is going down, that kind of thing. That's probably the most common level. Four, warning condition, or just warning. And you'll notice that things as we get lower in numbers, the, uh, the level seems to be getting higher as far as the level of emergency. Because now at three, we've got error conditions, or error. Two is critical, critical conditions. One, alert, immediate action needed. The uh-oh is my editorial comment. And zero, emergency system is unusable. And that's just never going to be a good thing. Now we can use the show logging command to see what your current syslog settings are for your console, for your monitor, for your buffers, and trap logging. And you can also see the contents of the log buffer if you have one, uh, starting with the most recent events. Now, when you see a level mentioned in the output of this command, it means that all events at that level and below will be logged. For example, when you see level debugging, uh, it means that syslog messages of all levels are being sent to those particular logs because debugging is the highest severity level uh, with the highest number. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here with show logging. And it says syslog logging is enabled. It's going to tell you how many messages that have dropped, rate limited, some other information here we're not really concerned about because we don't have that many. Console logging, you know, we've had some messages sent to us, 35 messages logged. Monitor logging, level debugging, zero messages logged. Buffer logging is disabled, so we don't really have a buffer here to, to see. Um, let's see what else we've got. Count and time stamp logging, etc. And trap logging, in level informational, but we don't have a syslog message uh, server because that's what trap logging actually refers to. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. And we're not going to work with all of these, but Here's an important one right at the top, logging followed by hostname or ABCD, the IP address of the logging host. When you use that, you'll want to use it with the trap command because that sets your syslog server logging level. And by default, that's informational. So you may want to raise that up a little bit. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got our console parameters here. We've got our host to set syslog IP address and parameters. We've got monitor to set your terminal line monitor logging parameters. It takes a little bit of practice to get the settings exactly the way you want them, but nothing here uh, terribly difficult. Let's go ahead and set a buffer, though, since we don't have one. And there are the names and the numbers. Now, again, you can enter, like, say, if I wanted it to be 
level two and below. If I just wanted to send critical condition messages and immediate action, and of course the emergency system is unusable, if I wanted to send those three levels only to my buffer, I only have to enter one line, and that would be logging buffered two, because that's going to be that number and all numbers below it. So if you're sending all of your messages to the buffer, say starting with seven, you don't need to enter eight separate commands. You just need to enter logging buffered seven. So let's go ahead and just generate a little something there. We'll do six. And you can see this very message, the one that came up here, you know, sysconfig configure from console, that's now in the buffer. And notice the size of the buffer by default, 4,096 bytes. And once you start, once the buffer gets full, it'll start overwriting the oldest messages. So you want to watch out for that as well. But anything we do now is going to show up in that buffer. I can do a fat or, yep, yeah. uh, anything six or below. So everything but debugging messages. So I'll just do a shut and a no shut there on an interface that I had open. And we'll get a couple of messages that we've certainly seen a lot of. And now if you run show logging, you'll actually see that at the bottom of your log. So that's a pretty handy little tool there, but again, quick reminder here, as far as logging goes, if you set the logging for, if you set a syslog server up and you say, okay, here's my syslog server, you definitely want to go ahead and set a trap, and then you can set that to, say, seven if you wanted to. But again, you can use the number or the word, doesn't matter. Again, it would not hurt to memorize these, I think, for the exam, be a good stuff to know. But logging nothing in syslog, nothing particularly complex here at all. You just have to do a little tweaking here and there to get the messages you want without becoming overwhelmed by them. Because the great thing about a syslog server, as opposed to just looking at it on the router, is that your server, depending on what programs you use, etc., you have you can search through them. You know, it's easier to find something than just, you know, if you're looking at a full buffered log here, you're looking at one huge screen of information, it can be a little difficult to spot exactly uh, what you want. So let's talk about that timestamp and sequence number. Let's go ahead and put that on this particular video. Because we saw this message in the syslog message on the board, 2D03H. And we're used to seeing a timestamp at the beginning of these messages, but you know, two hours and three, two days and three hours, what? Well, you could probably guess that was since the router was last reloaded, because our timestamps can be set to reflect either the current time or the overall uptime. Now, I'm a big fan of having the current time on my timestamps. I, I, I'm not much on, well, so oh, 17 days, three hours since it was reloaded, you know, okay. Uh, I would rather just see the time. Now you can set this for either your debug timestamps or your log timestamps. And to me, using milliseconds um, in your timestamps is a bit of overkill, uh, but the option is there. And I will show that to you live in just a moment. Because I know one of the labs we looked at on a couple of routers, they were set to milliseconds. And I mean, it seemed like the timestamp took up 15% of the line. You probably don't want it to do that. Um, the sequence number service is the one we actually have enabled for this. And you can use it with timestamps or without. And notice what happened here. Because I did see this once and you know it just stunned me. I was like, what in the world is going on here? Well, if you do no service timestamps, if you actually turn that timestamps off, uh, then you're not going to have any timestamps. So check that out. There's service sequence numbers. You can assign a sequence number if you want. Uh, I don't use that terribly often, but it's good to know it's there. And then if you can take your timestamps off if you wanted, and you would just have sequence numbers. Again, I like the time. So let's go ahead and fool around with that a little bit. Actually, let's do service first. I'm going to show you those. And let's see, where's our service? There's our sequence number. Stamp logger messages with a sequence number. And your timestamps, I'm going to show you where you usually see those. You're going to see those up near the top. And notice service timestamps, debug, date time, msec, and then service timestamps, log, date time, msec. So someone's got that down to the millisecond on this one. And let's change that around a little bit because you can see in this message, uh, that we saw September 21st. You've got the time here, <clears throat> excuse me, 
down to the second and then down to the millisecond. So in extreme cases that may be necessary, but generally I would just leave that alone. So we're going to do a service time stamps. And then you've got debug or log. So you're deciding which one you're going to change. And we're going to go with log. And there's your choice between date time and uptime. So if you really want the uptime, it's not a bad option to know for the exam, but I prefer date time myself. And then at the end, you can use your local time zone for timestamps. You can add time zone information to your timestamps, or you can include milliseconds in your timestamp. I just like to go with that. That's fine with me. And then I would go back. I like to keep them the same. Service timestamps, debug date time, that's it. And now you'll notice when we get that, that we don't have the milliseconds there anymore. That does get a little bit annoying. So again, if you, you can turn these off if you don't want them at all, you know, your timestamps. So let's just take a look at how that looks. So there's none for your debugs. There's none for your logs. And then when the message comes up, check that out. <laughs> there's no timestamp there at all. And when you've been looking at timestamps for years and all of a sudden they're not there, it's like, what's different about this? And to turn them back on, you can just go right back in there and turn. Let's look at that service sequence numbers. I believe it's got a dash in there. Yep. And there you go. So if you want that to show up in your syslog, not a bad idea. You could do that, but they are not uh, knocking each other out. They're not mutually exclusive. So if we wanted to go back in and turn timestamps back on, then you can do just that. And that way you do have a sequence number. You can see that increment of one and then you've got all your usual information right there. So again, that's good stuff to know for your exam, but we all have our own little thing we like about our timestamps, and now you know exactly how to fine tune them to what you like, and also about those sequence numbers. That's a neat thing to know about. We are going to talk in the very next video about NetFlow for just a few minutes, a very high overview look at NetFlow. We're not getting into too many details. Uh, because that's a very complex deal, but they want you to know a bit about it for the CCNA, and it's good stuff to know. So I'll see you on the next video.